Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. Nikki's been working on her Spanish moss garden in the background here in Kentucky. I have. <laughs> did a good job. Thank you so much. It looks good, huh? I didn't think that could grow in Kentucky. <laughs> Actually, where are we, Nikki? We are in Florida. Yay. We're in Florida. We've been on the lake today, and my hope was to get enough critters mm -hmm. to come back and make us some fisherman stew. What else is it called? Bullion base. Now, this is not an exact dish. We're not in the south of France. We're not going to act like we're in Marseille, but we're going to use pretty much the same ingredients. Now, when Raoul, here's a picture of Raoul cooking for me, the French chef that I got to study with and watch. Yeah. One of the first things he did when I brought him a fish one time, he really didn't understand what he was doing. He was taking all the parts and pieces that I was going to throw away, and he made a fish stock out of them. Then I noticed he took tomatoes and white wine, and looking back on that, I realized that he made a bouillabaisse. Now, a lot of people might pronounce this differently, but usually in, in the French, if there's two S's, mm -hmm. it's not the Z sound, it's the hard S sound. So okay. you might hear some people say bouillabaisse or bouillabaisse, or I think the proper pronunciation is bouillabaisse. We're sticking to that. Bouillabaisse. We're just got gonna it. do it. it. You can't okay. stop us, we're out of control. So we come back from fishing today. Mm -hmm. We've caught bluegill, we've caught catfish, which we already ate. We right. had that for dinner. Delicious. Really and I'm walking out on the dock and our buddy Rabbit says, there's, there's gonna be tilapia out here. Mm -hmm. Guess who swam by? You were happy. I said, get my boat. Tilapia, big tilapia. <laughs> and on this lake, they're blue tilapia and they mm -hmm. can get up to like six, eight, nine pounds. They're right. huge. So I shot me a tilapia. You, I'm always amazed, even though I know you can do it, when you shoot one shot, boom, you got it. Well, that's Very what you good. gotta do. <laughs> so we got our tilapia, our friends got some crabs right mm -hmm. off the dock, some local blue crabs. We got some mussels, we got some clams. Scallops. Scallops. We shrimp. got scallops? And shrimp. And shrimp. Yes. Oh, we're gonna make something great. Nick, if you'll just cut me that onion up. For soups, I like, we call them fingernail size pieces. Look at your little fingernail, and that's about the size I like for soup. We're gonna saute our onions, celery. We might even put a few carrots in there. So in this recipe, we're gonna put some fennel. We got some fennel bulb right here. And we're gonna let all that get nice and sauteed for about three or four minutes until they get nice and brown. We're gonna take at least four cloves of garlic. We're gonna cook some of the sugar out of these onions and carrots, and we're not gonna get them done done, but you're starting to see a little brown around the edges. And it's close enough to where we wanna be. After we get our vegetables sauteed, we're gonna deglaze with at least a half a cup of white wine, and we're gonna take some sort of anise-flavored liqueur, and there's a lot of, a yeah. lot of those on the market. We're using a, a pasty, and we're gonna take that and probably use at least two tablespoons of that. Now we're gonna let that reduce a little bit. And in a minute, when that sun pops behind the hill, we're gonna change angles. And if you look behind us, there's a beautiful lake, beautiful, wonderful lake, and we're gonna switch directions and shoot that way because the sun will be down in a moment. After we get all our vegetables sauteed, then we're gonna come back with our tomatoes. And we're gonna take, I don't know, that's probably about 14 ounces, like the size of a can. Those are diced tomatoes. We're gonna add some bay leaves, some orange zest in there. Then we're gonna take a little bit of saffron. Now saffron are parts of a flower. Good. Doesn't it smell wonderful? Mm -hmm. It's very expensive, yes. but you've gotta have that taste. Because I spilled a little and you picked it up. You said don't spill it. So that's a dollar's <laughs> worth. Uh, we're gonna add some peppercorns, we're gonna come back and we're gonna take our stock and we're gonna strain that, strain all the solid parts out of that from the crab and the fish rib cage that we cut out of that tilapia. That you shot. That we shot, perfect for fish stock. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanna buy some clam juice, it's getting kind of expensive I've yeah, noticed here lately, but if you wanna buy some clam juice, you can find fish stock some places, that'll work perfectly. If you're gonna boil it down like we did, you wanna strain the top off, get kind of the, the not so attractive stuff off the top. Yucky stuff. Then you'll strain the solids out and that you're left with that nice stocky stuff. If you want to put a little bouillon in there, you can. If you want to put a little salt and pepper in there, you can to get that going. I'm going to take my strained fish stock and pour that in. Now I'm going to bring this to a boil and I'm going to reduce that about half. I'm going to put a little salt in there and I'm going to take some fresh thyme. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that in there. Put a little tomato paste in there. That's probably about a tablespoon. 
Now I'm going to put the top on. I'm going to heat this up and reduce it to half. All right, we've got our fish mm -hmm. that I just shot. Good job. Just wow. a little while ago. What a piece of fish. <laughs> that nice that piece is really nice. Let's take that and let's just cut some pieces off. Now always, always, always cut out that big, in the south they call it the mud vein. People call it the darker meat. You always want to cut that out, cut around that, because that's always strong, striper or anything else. So we're going to take these pieces of meat, and we're going to take these and we're going to cut up into little cubes. So we're going to put our fish and our scallops and our shrimp in first. Now when we put the clams and the mussels in, generally four to five minutes you start to see them open up, yeah. it's time to stop. If they don't open up, toss them over your shoulder. Okay. Don't eat them. All right, let's start with the fish. Let's drop that in. All right, we're going to put our fish in first. And our scallops. And our shrimp. Again, the clams and the mussels will go last. I'm going to cook this for about, oh, I don't know, eight minutes or so. Get that good and hot until your shrimp is nice and pink curling up on the end. Now, I don't have any fresh parsley, so I'm just going to put in a little bit of dried. Oh, it's going to be good. All right, we dropped our clams. We dropped our mussels. They're already starting to open. Nikki, what do you think? That looks amazing. Now, what I'm am I going to do in the end? I'm going to finish with a little bit of butter. Always. And why are you doing that? Because it's delish. Because that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Nobody can stop me. That's right. I'm out of control. So we're gonna cover that just for a few minutes. You ready to see Ms. Farmer? I am, I'm excited. Oh, wow, <laughs> wow, yum. Okay, I'm gonna scoop you up. A little bit of everything? A little bit of everything. Oh, I know you like scallops. I do. And I know you like mussels. I do. And I know you like clam. Look right here. Scallop. Wow, this is all my favorite stuff. Mm. Oh wow, your sauce. <laughs> you did good. Did you try the broth? Mm -hmm. It's very good. Take another big scoop of the broth. Hey, you know what? Wow. I was talking to Rabbit over here. He says, I can't believe you took a 12 inch pan and just put charcoal on it and cooked a restaurant grade food on here. Better than restaurant, he said. He said better than restaurant. He did. The thing is, that's fire. Mm -hmm. The heat on the top of your stove may be gas. It may be an electric range, but what it has is heat. It doesn't matter what your heat source is. If you've got the right heat, the right temperature, you can cook anything anywhere. Look what we've got here. Mm -hmm. I made some more of these. This was fun. But bouillon base, first time you've had it? It is, it's delicious. How would you describe it? It's kind of, it's not, I don't know how to describe it. It's like. If you go to a restaurant and your favorite muscle dish that you get. Usually they have some sort of garlic, mm -hmm. they have butter, they have parsley, and they'll have a French liqueur with an anise that's, flavor in the there. The anise is what makes it so good. That's, that's what I taste. That's what you're tasting in there. I like you that. You love your muscle dishes. Yes, that's good. Does that not taste exactly? You got your garlic. And we oh, topped wow. it off with just a little bit of butter. You kidding me? That's delicious. Oh, there's a shrimp, I gotta get a shrimp. And it makes all the, the seafood taste delicious mm -hmm. in that juice. You've got your tomato base with a white wine. You can also put just a little bit of basil in there. If you want to put some dry basil in there or fresh basil, I like that. That's good. To me, it's got just that rich. That's what I was gonna say, it's got a rich flavor. Seafood flavor yes. with your tomato base, your white wine, you taste you taste your, your liqueur in there. It's so good. And the garlic, and it's just beautiful. The only way you can explain it is just you gotta try it. Yeah, that's delicious. Absolutely delicious. All right, Ms. Farmer, you oh, good? Enjoy. You I'm like enjoy it? I'm enjoying this.
As you can see, we're not in Kentucky today. We're in Florida and I came down here to fish, but I also brought my bow, my bow fishing rig. Now there's a reason for that. I love to shoot bow and arrow at fish. This bow has a reel on it. It's got an arrow with a barb on it. So when you shoot through the fish, you can pull it back in. Now there's several places in Florida where you can shoot at tilapia. Tilapia is not a native species. It's been introduced. It's considered invasive species, kind of like the big head carp are back home. So you can shoot these. The great thing about these fish is if you cut that red meat out, they are delicious. You've had tilapia in the store. Now, the thing I know about this lake, it's spring fed and cleaned. So these fish are gonna taste beautiful. Now they're tough to clean. You have to go under and around the rib cage, but the meat that you get, once you cut that red meat out is beautiful. So we're out here today, no competition except for the alligators. Everywhere we look, we see alligators. There's one, there's one. You see just their heads. They're looking for tilapia on the bed too. We got a little competition, but let me tell you what, when it comes to getting your own food, that's what we're doing today. Some of these tilapia get up to six, seven, eight pounds, and we are loading up our freezer. Being that it's an invasive species, you can take as many as you want, and that's what we want to do here. So we're going to load the cooler up, and then we get home, we're going to load you up on some new recipe. We made it back. Yes, we did. Driving through Atlanta was no fun. No, it took two hours. That was not fun. You know, we, we usually drive through the night so we can bust through there. Right. We got there at five o'clock. It was beautiful. But it was a stressful drive. Yes, we it was. We did make it back. It was about a 15, 16 hour haul. Yeah. But you know what though? When I look at this right here, it's worth it. Oh yeah. Now I shot fish and I shot fish and I shot fish you did. and I shot fish you because did. there's no limit. Mm -hmm. They're invasive species as we talked about earlier. I went down to the bass fish and bluegill fish. But when I saw these on the nest, look at this. Is that not beautiful? That is That's beautiful. one of the smaller ones. Now, that, I've cut these pieces off to make serving type pieces. Now, a bigger filet will look something like this. Now, I haven't cut the red meat out of that. You've got to cut the red meat out. It has a strong taste to it in any fish, whether it's a stripe or a hybrid, whatever. Right. Cut that red meat out. My mouth is watering because mm -hmm. I'm thinking about what we're about to do. We're going to make a recipe with these tilapia. That's fairly simple to make, but anytime you have a good, firm, white, fleshed fish, oh my goodness, you're talking about something delicious here. Yes. Now these aren't the farm-raised tilapia that everybody talks right. about that's not good for you. This is wild tilapia. I know they're invasive, I don't care. Now we are on the tail end of some of our sugar-cured bacon. Delicious. We ate that today. So good. But we're gonna cut this off and we're gonna make some bacon grease out of that. And I guess we'll just have to eat the bacon, Nikki. Yes, we will, Isn't I can terrible? do that. So I'm gonna turn this on a low heat and we're just gonna go ahead and let that fat just ooze on out. Let that flavor ooze on out. Now this is from our pig that only made it to probably 190 pounds. Cause she was bad. She, she was a bad girl. Nikki on the hand, That's Nikki right. said, we're taking her for her makeover. I still have a scar. So there we Piggy. go. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get our olive oil simmering. I'm excited. Look at this beautiful piece of meat right here. That is. Beautiful piece of tilapia. And, and again, this is the smaller, smaller guys. I shot some huge ones. I should have weighed them. I saw a picture of the state record of the girl holding up. One of ours looked almost yeah. that big. Who knows? I think you're close to state record. I think I beat the state record. I think you did. And I've never seen anyone shoot so much, so many days. <laughs> I shot, of course, I have to shoot with my teeth. I lost the use of my right arm in a motorcycle accident. We have new viewers all the time. When I was 20, right. I was in the Marine Corps. So I had to figure out ways to do almost everything. So again, here's me shooting a bow here in Florida for these tilapia. I shot so much <laughs> that my shoulder, my teeth are fine, mm -hmm. but my shoulder is sore. Well, we would, you would go out for eight hours a day and shoot and shoot and shoot. I but took a nap, look, I took a nap. But look, yes, it's that's beautiful. beautiful. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. 
with this tilapia, I'm going to take a little blackened seasoning. Now, do you remember when we made our blackened seasoning? I do. One tablespoon sweet paprika, two and a half tablespoons of salt, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of cayenne, three quarter teaspoon white pepper, three quarter teaspoon black pepper, one half teaspoon of dried thyme leaves, and one half teaspoon of dried oregano leaves. Got some salt and pepper in my flour. I'm just gonna do a light, just a light coating on here. Wild tilapia. You know, we have quite a few friends wanting fish fries. They saw, I know. They saw how many fish you got. Well, I've got enough for a couple. Now, you know who's been wanting fish fry? Dad has been yes, wanting fish fry. Yes, he is. And Dad deserves one. So very shortly, we're going to be having Dad a all-out southern fish fry, a Kentucky fish fry. Is we're going to be out of control. That's right. Is he getting tilapia or bluegill? He gets whatever he wants. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these onions up into strips. For a one-armed guy, this is great. And our bacon is almost done, which it is, and we got enough grease there. We're going to start our onions. All right, we're going to leave this on low. Go ahead and pull that bacon if you will, Nicky. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Kelly got me this handy fish spatula. That is nice. Isn't I like handy, that. Daddy? I like that. That's perfect. All right, so yeah. we're going to let that get just golden brown. Now I'll tell you what we're going to do, Ms. Farmer. Now, there's a reason to let that on. We're going to pop our onions in here. Turn it back up just a little bit in our bacon grease. So everything's coming together nicely. All right, now our fish. It's beautiful. Oh, that is. Slightly brown. Oops, trying to break them. You can't have that. You know what? I'm going to get I'll this. use your special one. Yeah, now let's pop that in the oven. Ready? On a low setting. Let's see where our onions are at. Our onions are looking good. Oh, look at oh, that. They smell delicious. So now we're going to turn these way down because those are almost where we want them. Now, what do we do here, Mrs. Farmer? What we do need, we do? We need garlic. And we're just gonna brown this in a little bit of olive oil. I don't mind a bit that we got a little bit of flour in there because that'll be, that'll act as a thickener. Just when I see that my garlic is golden brown, not burnt, I'm gonna deglaze a little white wine. I'm gonna come in with a half a cup and we're almost there. Get that for you. Half a cup. A white wine. And probably a little over a half a cup of chicken stock. You smell that? It smells That's really something good. Magic. So let's bring the temperature up now. We're going to reduce this. You notice we're putting some lemon juice in here. This is a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful thing to do with your fish if you have a good white firm flesh Oh, fresh. Yeah. <laughs> firm say fresh. that again. You said firm. A white, firm, fleshed fish. You said it good. Say it three times faster. I'm not going to say it okay. three times. I had trouble <laughs> saying it once. So we're getting close on the reduction. So I'm going to go ahead and fire our burner back up with the onions. I'm going to man that for you. Yeah. And now what I'm going to do, we can even put a pat of butter in there, Miss Farmer. All righty. I like butter. A lot of people say, why do you call her Mrs. Farmer? And why does she call me Mrs. Farmer? There's a reason, because our family, all our family, mom is Miss Farmer, dad is Miss Farmer. So when we're a group, we're all Mr. Farmer, Mrs. Farmer, Mr. Farmer, Mr. Yeah. Farmer, Mr. Farmer. Makes so it's fun. kind of fun. So it's an old family tradition. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no other thought than that. When I call dad, he calls me Mr. Farmer. I call him Mr. Farmer. That's right. It's fun. Now I'm gonna drop this spinach in, and Miss Farmer, I don't want to wilt this too much. Okay, so just turn it a little bit. Just turn it a little bit. I'm gonna put a little salt. All right. We don't need too much salt because we've already got bacon in a little that's bit right. of pepper. All right, I would say that's reduced by half. That smells now delicious. One at a time. I'm gonna bring in a piece of butter here. Maybe two at a time. Maybe three at a time. So we have our spinach, which is good for stress. Yeah. When you're really? driving through big cities. Okay, you should eat your spinach. I need to eat a lot of spinach. It's good for your eyes. Really? It's got vitamin C, vitamin K1, which is important. Vitamin A. And look where we're at right here, Mrs. Farmer. Oh, wow. Oh, look. That looks look. thickening up. There it is. 
And then the very end, we're going to put just a little bit of cream in there. All right, now what I need you to do, Miss Farmer, if you will, okay. is to grab that fish. Oh my, Mrs. Farmer. I'm excited. You go first. I get to go first. This is what you got for us. You were so patient with me, sitting out on that boat all day. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. A little spinach with mine and some onion. That's delicious. White and flaky. Oh, wow. You yeah, did yourself. I'm glad we got bags of this. We got bag loads. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm Miss Farmer. We should have shot some more. I think you got enough. You shot enough fish. That has wow. that has a wonderful fish taste, just enough. It does. And that in a combination with the spinach and the mm. onion mm. and our sauce with our lemon and white wine. That's better than a fancy restaurant. You did good. Yeah, it did yourself. I'm glad we took all that time oh. to shoot all the fish. It was worth it. It was worth the 29 hours. Oh well, no, actually 50 million hours that we spent you on You want to go back? I do, Tomorrow? but let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, for do. that drive through Atlanta, I'd do it. I do. Pickle beat. Gotta have a beat. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. What a meal. That's beautiful. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Delicious. We used our own bacon. We did. We used fresh spinach, onions. Everything here is fresh. It's wonderful. The way yes, it should it be. No yes, preservatives, no chemicals. Mm -hmm. Yum, Papa. <laughs> Yum, Papa. I agree. As Sammy would say. That's right. You bet. Kids in their thoughts. Yes. That'll be yum. Okay. That'll be yum. <laughs> in fact, there he was. Amazingly enough, this is, this is going to blow your mind about a half hour's up. Wow. But that being said, people are saying, where can I find this recipe? I'll bet you could go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Look it up. There's 14 gazillion recipes There's on there. Yes. And we are enjoying our Facebook time with some folks out there. We Get are. a lot of new people on. The only rules we have are be kind. That's right. And if you're not, we just hit a little button to make them go away. Ooh, they bleep away. That's right. So we want you to be our Facebook friend, but it's so complicated. It is. How do you do it? You hit like. It's hard. I like that fish. I like too. I so like. Farmer, it's all about good times. Good friends. And really good eats as we'll always. We'll see you next week on Tim Warmer's Country Kitchen. Good, Dig in. Nikki. Good job again. Yum. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.